is a quad rotor. It's called a quad rotor because it has four propellers that spin and generate thrust. More on that in a second. This is the pilot controlling the vehicle with a radio transmitter. That's pretty neat, but if we take a short trip across the street, of course looking both ways before we cross, we come to a place where this quad rotor can fly by itself without any human help at all. We don't even need a pilot. This flying robot can operate with extreme precision in tight indoor spaces and can do some other pretty neat stuff as well. So if you're wondering how to make robots fly, you've come to the right place. Maybe crash course isn't the right term. To figure out how to make robots fly, we'll need to understand the basic physics of quad rotors, how humans pilot them, how we can use a computer to achieve the same task, and why the resulting flying robots can do more complex things. First, let's take a quick look at the physics behind how the quad rotor flies. When the propellers spin, they push downward on the air around them. Newton's third law tells us that the air applies an equal and opposite reaction force on the propeller. When this lifting force equals that of gravity, the quad rotor achieves hover flight. In order to bank, one propeller spins slightly faster than the opposite one. This introduces a horizontal force in addition to the one opposing gravity, and the vehicle moves sideways. That's great, but it doesn't tell us how the quad rotor can rotate about its vertical axis. It turns out that Newton's third law also applies to rotational force, called torque. When these two propellers spin, they apply a torque to the air in the clockwise direction. The air applies an equal and opposite reaction torque, pushing the vehicle in a counterclockwise direction. Meanwhile, the other two motors spin in the other direction, thus the reaction torque pushes the vehicle clockwise. When all four motors are turned on, the rotational forces, remember, they're called torques, balance each other. In flight, the vehicle turns by spinning two motors ever so slightly faster than the other two. Now we know the basic physics of how a quad rotor flies, but before we can make it fly robotically, we need to know how to control it. First, let's figure out how a human would do this. The task can be broken down into four key steps. First, the pilot uses his eyes to observe the vehicle and figure out where it is and in which direction it's pointing. In this example, let's say that the pilot sees that the quad rotor is sinking. Next, the pilot has to decide what control commands to give the vehicle. In this case, the pilot has to stop the vehicle from sinking, and thus decides to increase the speed of all four propellers. To tell the quad rotor what he's decided on, the pilot uses a radio transmitter, which is basically a fancy remote control. Finally, the quad rotor listens for the radio commands and adjusts the speed of each motor accordingly. 